Today I'm reviewing an HDMI TV dongle. This is an easy cast or any cast device. And uh, there are a lot of people selling these. They are all over the internet. And uh, they're kind of a knockoff of the Chromecast or Roku technology or, or idea. Not as fully featured as the Chromecast or the Roku, uh, but they do act as a full DLNA or AirPlay host or renderer. So you can play to your TV from any DNLA enabled device or any AirPlay enabled device, which is a good thing. Um, that being said, you can't do uh, straight up streaming and they don't come with a remote control or an app that controls it. Um, so uh, it's not a big deal. It's uh, pretty easy to use. It's basically turning your TV into a front end for your media server. This particular one is sold by Epoch Air and I'll put a link to it down in the video description below. Those of you that are kind of new to the TV dongle world, um, it is a wide new world. Um, I'm, I'm doing a whole new series of videos on them. Um, the whole Android TV based boxes are pretty much going to take over the whole TV world in the next year or two. Um, everything is going Android based. And uh, now that these boxes are getting more and more advanced, um, I, I'm already a convert. I use my Android TV box for all streaming and all TV applications. It's just a hands down the winner. This is a more basic device. This is just going to allow you to use your TV as a front end. So if you're familiar with apps like uh, Bubble UPnP or you use your uh, Kodi um, or your Xbox as a media server, this will allow you to stream straight to your TV without any, uh, any kind of uh, interface at all. So, pretty simple device. Uh, I'll show you what you get in the box here. You got your cord. It's a USB power cord uh, slash Wi-Fi antenna cord. That is required to uh, feed power to the, uh, the device. There's that. And then you've got the actual dongle itself, which looks surprisingly a lot like a Chromecast. Um, there is a button on the back to switch it from DNLA mode to Miracast mode. Uh, Miracast mode basically just mirrors the screen of your tablet or your phone. Um, I like DNLA mode much better. It's much more versatile. Once you get the hang of DNLA, um, you're going to start streaming stuff from every device to every other device using another device. It's uh, pretty cool what you can do. So let's jump right into it. I'm going to hook this up to my TV and show you how to set it up and use it. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to set up your Anycast or EasyCast dongle with your TV. It's very simple. You're just going to take your dongle, plug it into an open HDMI port on the back of your TV, and then uh, take the included USB cord. And if you have USB ports on your TV, go ahead and run that to one of the USB ports on your TV. If you don't have USB ports, just plug it into an old uh, USB charger. It only needs 500 milliamps to run. Once you have it on and connected, go ahead and turn your TV on and then switch your source to that HDMI port and you will see a screen much like this one here. From this point forward, all we need to get it all set up is a phone, a tablet, anything that can access a web browser. So in this demonstration, I'm gonna use this Apple iPhone 6S Plus here. Um, you could just as, just as easily use an Android phone, a computer, anything with a web browser. So first things first, let's go ahead and turn on our phone here. And uh, we're going to go straight into our Wi-Fi settings. Let me get this to focus on the phone here. And you can see there we've got an Anycast device. And the password is actually right up here in the top right corner there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Join. And we're connected. So we'll go back. And now we just need to open up a web browser here. And we're going to go straight up to the address bar here. And you can see there on the screen, this uh, step 2, 192.168.49.1. You're just going to type that number into the address bar on your browser here. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go 192. And there it is right at the top. You don't need the HTTP in front of it. Uh, it knows when you start typing in 192.168.49.1. Uh, as soon as you hit enter, it's going to automatically add the HTTP onto the front of it. So this is the front end interface for our dongle here. We're just going to click on this top button and we're going to go ahead and scan for networks. And there's my network right there. And excuse me while I put in the password here.
And now we are connected. All right, so now it's set up to go. We can now access the TV as a DLNA host device or renderer um, from any uh, DNLA device on the network. And you might be surprised how many devices are actually capable. Direct TV boxes, Windows 7 computers, um, Apple computers, uh, every pretty much every modern phone can act as a DL DNLA server and remote. It's pretty amazing what you can do these days. Now that Wi-Fi is connected, we can now use the dongle as a DNLA renderer for any other device on the, on the network. You can actually use one device to be the remote to send the, the file from the library to the renderer and vice versa. It's very dynamic and it's very good technology. Um, but in order to best uh, demonstrate that, instead of using my phone or a computer, I'm going to demonstrate it using my Android TV box, which is connected to a different HDMI port on this same TV. So I'm just going to go to uh, that port here. And this is my Android front end for my Android TV. And I'm going to use an app called Bubble UPnP. Uh, that's my favorite DNLA renderer or front end program. And over here on the left, you see uh, library, renderer, and uh, now playing, and playlist there. So the renderer, I've got it selected as the Anycast, but look at all these other devices I could render to. Um, I've got uh, the Kodi server, I've got Fire TVs, I've got Xboxes, um, even my computer can act as a renderer. But I've got Anycast selected there. We're going to go ahead and reselect that. And then for library, I've actually got my um, my computer Plex library set as a library, and that's what these files are over here. And I'm just going to start one of these playing here. And you notice it pops up down there. It is casting, it is using the remote, or the Bubble UPnP app is acting as a remote to send the file from my computer to the dongle, which is on the other port. So we're going to go ahead and change the port back to the Anycast dongle there. Time. And there it is, it's fine. Now, uh, in order to control that, uh, you can use uh, the same web browser application that you had. You just go to that same web address and you can uh, play, pause, start, all that stuff, and it'll go back. So, um... You remember that screen there, that's our main setup screen. If you just go to uh, media controls there, there's your play, pause, start, and all that. You can also do it from the other front end. I could have done it in Bubble UPnP, because um, it's kind of a pain in the ass to open up a web browser and go to that web address every, anytime you want to pause, play, start, stop, any of that stuff. So I would recommend using the DNLA remote to control the, uh, the playback. So it's that simple. Um, it's very easy to use. It acts as a fully featured uh, uh, renderer for your DNLA network. Now the other option is to use Miracast mode. And in Miracast mode, um, you're basically mirroring the screen on your uh, your phone or your tablet. Um, I don't really like that mode very much. There's a it tends to be a little bit of, of a delay. You're basically using your phone, um, and the screen is mirrored over here. And there's issues with orientation and stuff. Um, I like DNLA mode better. As soon as you get it set up, you'll probably love it too. Um, so if you have any more questions, uh, make sure you uh, ask in the comments down below. Um, I do have quite a few videos on internet-based TV dongles and that sort of thing. So if you're interested or you're new to the, the dongle world, uh, make sure you check out my Gadget Class channel on YouTube and uh, subscribe to that channel. And uh, I'll show you the wonderful world of internet TV. So uh, make sure you hit yes for found this review helpful, hit the thumbs up button on the YouTube video, and uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel.